Schneiderman, and this is Conversations on Creating to Heal. And today I have the pleasure of speaking with Chris Hennessy from Woodland, California. He is a video producer, author, motivational speaker, and a independent filmmaker. And his upcoming book, Touched by Hannah, in it, he tells the story of a man with cancer, his one pound newborn, and their fight for life. So welcome, Chris. Hey, Lisa, it's so great to talk to you. I've been looking forward to this. Yeah, well, thanks for coming on. And for people who may not know you, I gave a brief introduction, but maybe talk a little bit about uh, if you have a mission or purpose for all of these different uh, artistic hats that you wear. Yeah, you know, I think uh, my mission is a couple of different things. It's uh, to inspire people to know that they can look back at their past accomplishments. And when they face trials and tribulations in the now, they can look back at those prior accomplishments and go, man, I've accomplished some great things. So I've got the confidence now to accomplish this. That's my number one. And my number two is, you know, I want to bring awareness to uh, having your child born premature. It's a uh, something that's a lot more prevalent than we think. 10% uh, of babies are born premature. A lot few of that, them are born, as Hannah was, as a micro premature baby, which is a baby two pounds and under. But I think if people were aware of, of that and you know what to do if that might happen, I think it could save some lives. Thank you. So inspiration and awareness, it sounds like. And I want to kind of jump right to your transformation story. So I said that your story is a remarkable true story of a man with cancer, a one pound newborn, and your fight for life. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what led up to this and how it's most significantly transformed you? Well, you know, I think when we go through difficult times and we persevere, and we get through them, I think it makes us a better person, a stronger person, uh, and more able to handle any tough things that might happen in the future. And I think that's exactly what happened in this situation. My wife and I were trying to have a baby, um, and for three years it wasn't working. And um, I have three older kids, so I knew I could make babies. So we both went to get checked by the doctor. Betsy checked out fine, but the doctor started looking at me saying, wow, this is weird. Ah, I haven't seen anything like this in my whole 30 years of practice. It got down to the point to where they thought there was a good chance that I had prostate cancer. And after several blood tests, they said, hey, Chris, we need you to, um, to do a biopsy. We need to biopsy your prostate. But we know you're trying to make a baby. When we biopsy you, that will be it with fatherhood. You won't be able to make a baby anymore. I said, wait a second. Can we try just for another month or two to make Hannah before the biopsy? He said, yeah, it's, it's, I don't see it as life and death. We'll see you in eight weeks for your biopsy. So after trying for three years to have a baby, we had eight weeks to try to make a baby for one final time. And we really thought our dream to have, we've been talking about having a Hannah for 10 years. We were together for 10 years at that point. We thought that dream wasn't gonna happen. And then one night, about four weeks later, I woke up and Betsy was doing a pregnancy test. And she said, does this look like a positive to you? I said, yeah, it does. We went to CVS to buy a few more of those tests to make sure, and sure enough, we were pregnant with Hannah. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> about, about a couple weeks later, I did have the biopsy, and unfortunately, it came up with, uh, there were several of the little biopsy pieces that had cancer. So on August 3rd, 2009, I had a radical prostatectomy cancer surgery at Stanford. Had severe complications about three days later, came really close to dying. My wife was right with me with that. And it was just a horrendous, horrific day um, and I got through it. And the weird thing is when I got through that day, I, right away I thought to myself, wow, you just got through an amazing thing. This is gonna give you confidence forever. It's really weird. 
Then I developed some severe complications. I had deep vein thrombosis, blood clots in my feet, uh, my legs. And about less than a month later from the surgery, Hannah, who was due on December 7th that year, was born suddenly on September 1st. Several months premature, weighing one pound, nine ounces. Wow, unexpected. So, besides having me and my issues and then radiation treatments to face, we had a baby that had about a 50% chance of living and much less than a 50% chance of having a healthy life. It was a lot to deal with at one time. And being a storyteller, when we did get through these issues, a couple of years later, I thought to myself, this would make a great story. And I sat down with that ever had written writing a book before. I didn't even have any notes from the incident. And I wrote 365 pages. That's amazing. Touched that just hand. came out. That, that's, what, that's what you had inside to give. Absolutely. Yeah. And so how has that process, creating this book, how has that helped you heal? And how is it helping others heal if it's something you're sharing with others? Wow. Writing the book, which took me, might have taken me two years to write the book, but it was so much fun and so rewarding to sit down and just let it out. And then every time I would write about five pages, maybe 10 pages, I'd go back and I'd keep refining it and changing it and adding and thinking of things. Um, and I did that over and over before I'd go to the next five or 10 pages. And, you know, it, it was just, just a real healing process. It really took a load off of my shoulders. I had wanted to create a documentary film first, but when it came down to it, I thought I decided, you know what, the best way for me to do this is to get it all out and to write a book. <clears throat> you know, and I did that and, and it, it just has made me feel so warm and, uh, and so rewarding. Now, the book technically is not finished. We're still working on getting it edited, which is almost like writing the book again, um, if you really want to make a professional book. Honestly, it's still going to take six months or a year before we're completely done with Touch by Hannah. I understand. Is it, is it something that you can share a little bit with us right now? I would love for you to share a meaningful passage, perhaps. Meaningful. Before I do that, can I, can I just share one thing of the re reactions that I had? Yeah, of course. Because I have gone around and I've done several speaking engagements um, about my story. And I couldn't be more pleased with the incredible receptions that I've been receiving from audiences, how they just think the story is incredible. You know, they want to hear more. They want to read the book. We've been on KGO radio with the story. We've been on NBC TV. So literally. I'm glad to hear. I'm glad to hear it's getting such great reception. It must make you feel that you have um, impact, you know, that you're having an impact just by sharing, you know, something that happened to you. And, do, and doing what you and I do, our goal in life is to make an impact and to touch people and make people better people and to make people go, wow, and wow, I learned something and make them laugh and make them cry. And it's, yeah, it's, it's really fabulous. I can't wait to get the book done. Um, if you guys ever write a book out there, the editing is a real pain in the neck. But <laughs> you gotta do it. You gotta do what you gotta do. After Hannah was born, the doctor approached us told us Hannah had a 50% chance of living. Then he gave us some odds, and I'm gonna read this last couple pages of the first chapter of Touch by Hannah. The doctor said, in the long term, Hannah has a good probability of developing cerebral palsy, impaired cognitive skills, leading to learning disabilities, vision problems, dental issues, behavior, psychological problems, and there's increased risk of sudden infant death syndrome. Doctor said, now we've got to get Hannah's digestive system moving. I looked at Hannah, one pound ounces, and thought, good luck with that. It's the only way we had contact. You put your hand in the incubator, you make a grab on like that, and microscopic hand would touch me. It's very healthy for the baby. I sang ad lib songs and prayers while bonding with my baby three months before I was supposed to. When she wrapped her 
almost microscopic fingers around mine. They felt soft as snowflakes falling unhurriedly from a silent sky and landing ever so gently on my finger. Finger. I remember a favorite song from college, Soft Touch, from George Harrison's 1979 solo album. This would be the only non-original song I'd sing to Hannah. I sang these lines over and over. You're a soft, you're a soft touch baby, like a snowflake's falling. My whole heart is melting. Hannah became my soft touch baby, and when I was with her, I was truly in the moment. When you're living totally in the moment, there is no tomorrow. And when there is no tomorrow, there's no stressing about tomorrow. I felt honored, blessed, and cherishing every second that I sat there touched by Hannah. Wow. <laughs> I love it. I love the passage. I love how you made me feel and just giving me a little glimpse into that world. So thanks thank so much for sharing that. Yeah. And before we go, do you have some, some lessons learned or maybe some final words to impart just from your experience and your journey of dealing with so much adversity? What might you have to say to others? I would say definitely start drinking as much alcohol. <laughs> no, I'm not saying oh, that. humor. No, this is great. <laughs> I'm a non-drinker. But everybody has difficult and many of us do have life threatening things that happen suddenly. My almost death and, and then cats, I mean, Hannah being born suddenly on a day where we were thinking it was gonna be three months away, I had the blessed ability to, to react in a positive way of that and be totally positive and encouraging uh, and rah-rah to my wife who went through a really hard time with that birth and then I had the doctors um, even laughing in some of the most life-threatening times, just keeping it loose and, and keeping it real. And even though I was scared to death, I think I helped the doctors perform even better and they were a great team to us and they loved us. And when it was said and done with Hannah, after three months, she got out of there alive and well. I think my ability to stay calm and cool under pressure and my love for my daughter being there her every night and holding her hand for hours from 6 p.m. sometimes to one in the morning, two in the morning. I think, I really think the doctor said that I helped save Hannah's life, there's no doubt. So when stuff happens, if you can do what's best in the situation and get through it with a positive outcome, man, it'll give you confidence for the rest of the life to know that you can do really good special things. So go out there and do it. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Uh, you know, to sum up, it sounds like attitude, positivity, uh, belief in self, and uh, the, your ability to overcome any adversity that's coming your way. So, no doubt about that. And then we're Christians, so we did pray a lot too, and we had a lot yeah. of people praying for us. Excellent. Well, thank you, Chris, for coming on Conversations on Creating to Heal. Hey, listen, best of luck. And uh, it was a pleasure talking to you, Lisa.